So what are we looking at this evening? We've done, and then my doofa, there we go. We did two series during 2015 and 2016, if my math is correct. Uh, Bootcamp and Masterclass. Bootcamp, a series of 12. Uh, Masterclass, a series of six videos, all available online. Very much the Bootcamp was theory, just hardcore theory around trading, the practices, the theories behind it and the like. Uh, Masterclass was the more practical, looking at, 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 at trading systems, whether it be indices or, or FX or, or, or uh, equities, whatever the case may be. Um, incredibly well received. Some of the, the videos collectively have done, I don't know, over 150,000 views probably. But there's a missing thread to it, which is why we're here this evening. And that missing thread is, so we understand the practical part of trading. We understand the theory behind how to, to, to manage risk and what to trade and everything else. That missing thread is, but how do we take that you know, final step and in essence integrate trading into our lifestyle? And that's what we're looking at over the next three sessions, today, end of September, and then again at the end of October. Um, and, and partly this is a process that came to me. I've been doing major adjustments to my lifestyle, selling houses, buying flats, etc., downscaling freeing up more of my time um, and whilst I've been trading for 20 odd years 17 of them successfully the first five incredibly unsuccessfully the polite way I was a pro at losing money man I would no, no one could beat me at losing money but it was the 90s so you know losing they I had excuses there was no internets and IGs and things like this um, how do we practically take that step where we actually integrate trading into our life and actually make it a part of what and who and, and, and we do? And on the surface, when I was pondering this during last year, I was thinking to myself, well, that's hard. this is going to be easy. How hard can this be? I've been trading forever, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. The mistake I made is that my job is to stare at markets all day and every day. It's what I get paid to be. I need to know what the bid vest results were. I need to know where the discovery share price is. I need to know what the NASPAS weighting in the index, etc., etc. When I try and step a bit away from that and still trade, it's suddenly that sort of disconnect. And it's like, how do I actually practically make this work? So what we're looking at here is, to a fair degree, my experiences of so far in 2017, which is what, that's what I've been doing, um, is integrating it in. And, and the longest story for me is I'm still working and stuff, but ultimately I want to start living more in Airbnb and living a more lazy life. Uh, and I've been trying that for a while with a large dollop of no success, but that's the, the longer plan to it. Hence the, the presentations we're looking at this evening. Um, and three parts to it. The first is the process which we look at this evening. The second part in September will be around the money part of it, um, the risk management, the how much do we need and all of those bits and how we manage the money and even small things like currencies. Like I want to trade DAX and FTSE, lacquer, except then am I not trading two different currencies? Which means every time, so if my base currency is, is, is sterling, when I'm trading DAX, I've got a currency hit that is a cost and a spread and all of, you know, and you might say, well, how much is it? And the point is, it's there and it is an expense and we need to be cognizant of it. So it's running through that part of it. And then the last part, which will be in, in end of October, which will be taking it really down to the tools that we can use to simplify it. Today, we're going to look at process, the key parts that we need in order to, to, to integrate the trading into our life. And there's an important point there, is we're integrating trading into our life. We don't adapt ourselves to the, to the trading. We need to adapt the trading to us. We need to say, how can we make the trading fit with what we want to be? Because if we're not making it fit with what we want to be, then frankly, we're, it, it, it's, it's, you know, we may as well go and get a job at a grocery store or a bank or something like that. Nothing wrong with grocery stores and banks. I've worked at both. But that's not what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to get to what I call freedom from ties that bind. I'll come to that in, 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 in a second. So how do we get trading to fit into us? How do we make it a meaningful source of income, whether it's primary or not? My sense is that we are sovereign individuals these days, and it is a rookie error to have a single source of income. Um, and those sources of income can be long-term equity holdings, which are paying dividends. Those sources of income can be trading, and there can be many other things. In this day and age of the internet, there are more ways to make money than we can imagine. Um, and ultimately, the whole idea of retiring at 65 and sitting on the porch for these days, 30 plus years until we finally die of old age is just, you know, it just doesn't work. It's just not viable. We will A, run out of money and B, just go crazy. The 
excuse me, the concept of retirement is completely broken. Largely because as a concept, retirement came out in the 1880s. You know, retirement age was 65 in Germany and life expectancy was 63. You were never meant to get to retirement and if you did, you weren't meant to be there very long. Now you get to retirement age 65, your chance of making 95 is 48 percent. The chance of your money surviving until you're 95 is about 4 percent. I mean, the, the industry is just broken and we've got to manage this and trading is, is probably one of the easiest and, 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 and simplest ways of doing it. Remove the stress from trading. There are two views around the emotional part of trading. I'm not delving into it in detail, but there are the videos on it. And I'll touch on it now quickly. The one is to be a cold, heartless bastard, which is what I apparently am, and just not care about the, the, the emotion. And it took me a while to get there. The other is to manage the emotion and to, to, to recognize and, 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 and work them out of your life. The point being that if you have fun when you're trading, you're probably losing money. And half your life is going to be terribly horrible. If you, every time you have a winning trade and make money, you go and do a jig and jump up and down and take your friends drinking and pop the champagne, what happens the other 50% of the time when you lose money? Hello, manic depression. So what you've got to actually do is just remove the emotion completely and absolutely from it. Uh, Mark Douglas trading in his own. Now, Mark Douglas's theory is considered to be old school. There's new stuff coming through these days. But to my mind, Mark Douglas, Trading in the Zone, is the book which, 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 which gives you that whole process and helps you understand what we're doing and that losing trades are just a, you know, I had the best six months of my trading life, the first half of this year. And then August was, I had a week, one week, the worst week of my entri entire trading life. Well, not true, since 2000. Um, but it was all within system, all within rules and requirements. The point is that in the first six months, I'd just been lucky and I hadn't had those, what I call the, 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 the big down trades. And then I had four in a week. You know, and and it, it, you know, it, it bangs your heart. So that's fine. I went into Amazon and bought some stuff. <clears throat> Minimal time required. We don't want to be, you know... When I was in Cape Town, I went to Storm Trading where Petri Radenhaus works these days and there's guys there who, who, are, who are day traders and they're there at 7 in the morning and they leave at 6 in the evening and they make vast amount of money and everything else, but they have a job. You know, I want to be a surfer. That's really what I want to be. Or maybe a photographer and the surf is bad. You know, I, I don't want to be a trader. I don't want a job in the sense of a trader. I don't want to be spending, hell, I don't want to be spending an hour a day in the trading environment. I want to be spending, I, I said it before, my goal is 30 minutes a week. Uh, and I'm a hell of a long way from there now and I'll get to why, etc. Um, but we want to reduce that time to, let, to free us up. Strong systems, strong processes. That's what we need to filter through and, and make that really work. I think my doofer is running out of batteries. <coughs> there we go. Um, must support us financially, that takes time to get to. When you start trading, it's emotional, it's stressful, it costs us money, that's fine, it's part of the process. We cover that in the boot camp and the master class. Free time for what matters, remove the stress, and take, uh, free up the time, etc. What we're looking for, uh, tongue. freedom from ties that bind. This is actually a title of a book that came out in the 80s. It was an esoteric book. I never read the book. The book had no interest to me, but the concept had interest to me. What are the things that bind us? The things that bind us are, all the, you know, they're, they're going to be different for everyone. Sometimes they're, they're, they're jobs, sometimes they're debt, sometimes they they family commitments, sometimes they're relationships, those sort of things. What do we want to be? We want to be able to do what makes us happy. More than anything as a human being, we want to do stuff that makes us happy. 70 people here this evening, 70 different things make us happy. Me, happy, surfing. Love it, nothing more fun. And maybe if I lived in Durban, it would be less so. You know, living in Joburg maybe makes the heart grow fonder to surfing, seeing as, seeing as the surf in Joburg is pretty, pretty um, second rate. Freedom from ties that bind. And we live in a golden age of 2017 where, where we can totally and absolutely do this where we can earn money off the devices that sit in our hand that can connect anywhere in the world as long as there's internet, which is, you know, vast swaths of planet Earth. We can be there. We can, whatever it is, if you, you know, travel the world or be a surfer or, uh, you know, farm because you love farming, but farming doesn't really make money. So you farm for love and you, whatever it might be, it's going to be different for everyone. Trading enables that. That's the beauty of trading. When I was starting trading in the mid-90s, trading did not offer this really. 
It, it, was, it, it was something that tied you down. You had to be stuck to a desk and a telephone and, and all of that sort of thing. We've now moved into a new place. But we need to be smart about it and we need to make it work and we need to integrate it properly. But this is our goal. This is what we want. We want to do what makes us happy. We want to go to work on Monday morning because we enjoy work. Not because we, if we don't go to work, we lose our house and our partner will leave us and our kids will hate us. We want to go to work because that's what we want to do on a Monday morning. And if we don't, we phone the boss and we say, not today, dude. Next week, yeah, let you know. <laughs> so we need to go through the processes. What are we going to trade? The time frames we're looking at, the capital I come to later, the process, the practice, the skills, the discipline. I want to focus on the what's, so I want to focus on the time frames. I am an opinionated person. This presentation is going to be my opinion. If your opinion is different, that is fine. Uh, my, my, my suggestion is at least give what I say some pinches of salt and give it cognizance and some thought. Some of it, what I'm saying, is, is from lots and lots of experience, and I've got the scars, albeit I've got all my fingers left. Um, there are an infinite way, number of ways of doing this. This is the process I'm going through. Let me connect that. Thank you. It is a doofer. So there are, <coughs> there are bunches of decisions, processes we need to go through. I'm going to run through them. We'll loop them up at the end and bring them together and, and, and go through the process. The <coughs> Maybe it's just me. I can't leave my computer. So we're going to look at what to take the time frames, the systems, and exit strategies. Exit strategies exceedingly important. We spend a large amount of time on the entries. We spend a small amount of time. We seldom actually give thought to time frames. What do we typically do? We start trading. We open up the IG platform. We see these lovely charts moving around. We drop on some moving averages, and we see yes, I would have made some money on that one. Whoa, made some a. Hey. We throw money at it, and as sure as Murphy is watching, boom, 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 it loses. So what do we do? Oh, we change the time frame, or we change the moving average, or we drop a stochastic in, and that makes some money. And we're constantly, you know, working, breaking, tweaking, working, breaking, tweaking. And it's that comp process, we, we, we're constantly going through the process. What we need to do is we need to find something that does work, and we just need to stick to it. And when I was getting killed in, in early August in my trading with my 721, is to know, you know what, this stuff happens. I was expecting four or five of those sort of trades to happen over the course of a year. They just all happen in one week. You know, and I, I can't, you know, and the irony was I'd had uh, drinks with Pietri on the Sunday, and I'd said to him, you know what, my, my system's going to give me a snort club sometime soon. I didn't realize it was going to be like, 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 summer, like within 12 hours. Um, but we need, you know, anything in life. If you hit and miss, if you do it that way today and that way tomorrow in a different way on, on, on Wednesday, you're going to get nothing. You've got no consistency. You can't trust it. We need to have that consistency. And, you know, the time frames, we just flip through time frames and, oh, that one looks like fun. Let's trade that without giving cognizant and thought as to why this time frame. What are the benefits? Does it fit with what we're trying to do? Um, we try different products. We try different, different uh, 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 underlyings. We do some FX. We do some indices. What we're trying to do this evening is to try and focus it down to say these are the things that to look at. These are the things to work on. So what to trade? Indices and FX. So step back a moment. Firstly, let's start with FX. FX is the least volatile instrument out there that we can trade. And ironically, volatility is not a trader's friend, right? Volatility is how much does a stock or whatever it is bounce around. And we think volatility is a thing of beauty because, man, check what happened to Steinhoff the other day, 15% down. If we were short, we doubled our money in six hours. Yeah, unless you were long, in which case you lost all your money in six hours. Or unless you were in Nampak instead of Steinhoff or whatever the case may be. The truth is, we want to do less trades, because every trade costs us money and risk and everything else. So I'm going to come back to that. But shares are volatile. Shares are single event risk. Steinhoff, a an article in a magazine in a language that, sh well, I was going to say, certainly I don't read German, published in Germany, rehashing something from two years ago, takes the stock down 15%. Single event risk. Massive single event risk. And that event is usually company specific. But you never you don't know what they are. And yes, sometimes they work in your favor. 
Maybe you were short Steinhoff. Maybe you were long Edcon when it got taken out and moved 40% higher in you know, two trades in 12 seconds. But that volatility brings an exceeding amount of risk to it. And the problem with trading is you know, a, an out-of-spec loss damages all sorts of things. Damages the head, damages the portfolio, damages relationship, just everything. It just goes horribly, horribly pear-shaped. So we move away from equity and we get to the less volatile. FX is the, less vo is the least volatile thing we have out there. Now I stress, I'm not talking miners, I'm not talking czar. Love the czar, but it's volatile. I'm talking dollar, euro, yen, sterling. Sean would add Swiss franc, he's braver than I am. I have four currencies that I consider to be the majors that are worth trading. Me, I trade euro USD. Euro USD is a beautiful thing to trade. If it moves one and a half cents in a day, which is one and a half percent. Man, it's headline news. You know, Donald Trump can do something exceedingly stupid four times before breakfast and the currency moves 10 pips. So it's that lower volatility. What kills us with FX is two things. Firstly, we put 100 times gearing on it. It's the gearing that kills us, not the product. And we manage that in risk, and we talk about that in the money pr presentation. The second thing that kills us is when you are JP Morgan, City Chase, whoever, the very large banks around the world, and they want to have a prop trading desk. They want to give some guys money, and they say, go trade for us and make us profit. Where do they want to go? Do they want to go to the most liquid, most efficient market in the world, FX, particularly Euro dollar. I mean, the quantums of money going through in the FX market is trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. It is markedly bigger than the entire global equity market by a multiple. So they take their best traders and they put them in FX, which means you're going up against the best. And how does that trader make money? By taking it from somebody else, you. So if you're a novice and you go to the FX, this guy's like, ho, ho, I see lunch just arrived. So be very scared of FX until you know what you're doing. If you start an FX, expect to get caned repeatedly again and again and again and again for probably two, three, five years. Uh, that my response exactly. Painful. <laughs> Deeply painful. Because you're trading against the best. But ultimately, when we become the best, which is what we have to be, FX is a wonderful place to be. And I'm still just gently dipping my toe in. I was long in FX position in 2001. And I had made some money and I had 20,000 rand in the, 20, dollars in the account, sorry. And the Bank of Japan intervened in the currency market um, and moved the yen. They, uh, they put trillions of yen into it and they moved it all the way through my stop loss. These were the days where, where the best you could hope for was SMS. There was no online, there were, certainly there was no apps. I mean, 2001, what, I was probably rocking a Motorola with an aerial on it, you know, and, and a battery the size of my laptop type of scenario. Um, and I was on holiday and I, I remember trying to phone, trying to get signal to phone a friend to get a price. It didn't matter. My stop loss was here. By the time they got me out, 20,000 Rand was $65. In truth, I was quite lucky. I didn't owe money. But it took about three seconds for my entire account to get blown out. So I stayed away for a very long time. And I'm cautiously going back in. What I mean by cautiously, I'm trading many lots. Eh? You know, I'm the oak trading like you know, 10,000 lots, not the 100,000. But we'll talk more about that in the money space. Indices are a thing of beauty because they are so unvolatile. And particularly because when they trend, they can trend for ages. Now, our index has been a painful thing. Three years, we've gone exactly nowhere. It has been no fun whatsoever. But at some point, it'll break up, and at some point, it'll crash. And if you've got a robust system, you'll still make money in the sideways market. They're just less volatile. How many times has our index, the top 40, moved 2% this year? It hasn't. In a day, it hasn't. We haven't had a 2% day. It's 1,000 points. We haven't had a 1,000-point day all year. Now, I know what we're saying, oh, but how am I going to make money? You don't want the thousand-point days because if you're on the wrong side of them, you're going to get cleaned out. So, to my mind, it's indices and FX, and we start with the indices. Locally, we've got the SA40, uh, the Aussie futures, which I th that is my favorite thing. If you tell me I can trade one thing in the world, I trade that. 
It's, it's nice. It's suitably liquid enough. It moves around. Even in these really tough sideways markets, if you're in the, uh, even in the daily chart, it's been making money. The weekly chart's been broken because of the lack of movement. But the you know, daily and down, any chart from daily and down on a simple moving average crossover, it's been making good money for the last three years. When, the, when, when we finally get a trend and we break upwards and onwards and we go to 55, 60, 65,000, which is where I think we will eventually get to, hopefully before I get old and gray, um, th then they just become printing presses. Offshore markets, you've got the FTSE 100 and you've got the DAX. So I, the FTSE used to be a terrible market because we tracked the FTSE. They used to be the same thing, but that's changed with SAB Miller gone, with Didata gone, with Old Mutual so much smaller. Because we had so many stocks that were in the two indices, we pretty much tracked each other. But that's no longer the case. Um, and they're two great markets to trade as well. If you want to expand, you can trade those two as well. DAX is really lacquer to trade FTSE as well. These are great indices to trade. Most indices, there's a chap I met at an IG event in, in, in Durban who trades the Singapore index. And one of his reasons why he trades the Singapore index is he says, because I know nothing about it. No bias, no talking heads. I mean, who's the politician in Singapore? I mean, they must have them, right? Everyone has politicians. <laughs> we have no idea. If he shot Trump, we wouldn't know. So it's that lack of knowledge. Because what do we think? We think we need information. We think we, we can get to the coal front and be there. Ah, one thing comes, price. Now, I'm not going into that. That's in the other series that we talk about. But that desire to get more information does not make us wealthier or more profitable for it. And then the currency, as I said, I'm trading euro, USD. You could add the yen and the, the, the sterlings to them if you want to. Um, I think it's just my computer that's not happy. So I don't trade equity. I haven't traded in equity. I've done a, a bit of equity trading in, in, in recent years. I think in the last, so since I left Standard Bank six years ago, I think I've done four equity trades. Um, and and there were every time it was zombie stocks, you know, companies that are just, they, they're going bust. They're just, they're going to zero. One was African Bank, it did. Um, and then the other was Lonman before the, the rights issue. Um, and then Avenge also back in 2015, whatever it is. I don't like the equity risk. I don't like the volatility in it. it re it's risky. It requires too much management. Yes, we can put guaranteed stops in place. We can manage all of that. But for, for an equity to, if you look at the, the, I think it's a discovery candle. Is it today or yesterday? It opened down a whole lot and then closed up a whole lot. If you were long or short, you, you, the odds are you got stopped. And then it went your way anyway. It was just like, you know what, let's get everyone out of this share. You know, and let's do it one day and, and make everyone go move out of the way. Uh, the minor currencies, leave them alone. The Aussie dollar, the, 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 a lot of guys like to trade the New Zealand dollar. The czar, your risk is too huge, far too huge. Your spreads are wide. If you're going to trade the FX, go trade the really, really simple stuff. S&P 500, brilliant index to trade. Problem, time zone. Do you want to trade or do you want to have a life? Some nervous laughter, <laughs> which makes me decidedly nervous. No, it's really, really quite simple. Do you want to be trading from 4 until 10 every day, nighttime? Now, look, you can time sync your life, right? You could shift your whole life so that you go to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning and you wake up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and you start trading at 4 and that's the response, a horrible shake of the head. No, because you know what? Your friends aren't doing that. And it comes back to quality of life. It comes back to making the market work for us. So yes, S&P 500, E-minis, awesome, absolutely brilliant, brilliant thing to trade. But if it doesn't fit what we're trying to do, then we just walk away from it. It's like, you know what, there's other stuff out there we can trade. And this is what I mean about making those conscious decisions and saying, what do we do? How do we do it? Where do we start? How do we start? What are we trying to achieve? Rather than just saying, hey, man, this U.S. thing, it's lacquer, it's really fun. You could trade the S&P on a daily chart. That would probably work. Even FX gets a bit messy. I'll come to that in a moment because of the, 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 the time frames you're going to be using. But we, you, it's about making sure that we're in control of the process. So short answer, that's what I'm suggesting we trade. We start with SA40. Trade this. This is a great learning ground. A market that is going sideways is a brilliant place to learn how to be a trend trader. Because, man, it is hard. And the best training is hard training. The worst thing you want to do is learn how to trade in the bull market of 06, 07. 
Because then when the real hard part comes, you actually didn't learn how to trade. You just learned how to place orders, which is a useful skill. and You need to be able to do it, but you weren't learning how to trade. This market we're having now is a perfect place. All the oaks that they're day trading with Pear 3 and Cape Town are moaning. Oh, this is such a tough market. It's a brilliant market to learn it. And the good news, it won't last forever. <laughs> Please, God, touch wood. <laughs> So I'm going to come back to all of that, but now I want to quickly touch on time frames. Understand the distinction. So what I mean by time frames is are you in a one minute chart, a 15, a 30, a 60, a four hour, a daily, a weekly, a monthly? And I even saw a yearly chart the other day. Yearly charts are beautiful things, but they're not really tradable. Understand what we do when we shorten that time frame. Because what do we do when we log on to IG? And we log on, and I'm not sure what the default setting is, but we pretty quickly see the intraday. I mean, pretty, I mean, I don't know why, it's like, it's like a, a fly to honey. It's like very quickly we're all on the 15 minute. Wow, this is fun. Some of us who really don't like our fingers sort of navigate down to the five minute and then the one minute chart. Um, but we sort of think that this short nature, and I don't know what the attraction is, and I don't know why we rush to it, but I suppose because it's giving us so much feedback. You know, if you're waiting for a moving average crossover and you're in a daily chart, you might wait weeks. In fact, I'll show you a picture in a moment where you have waited months. You want gratification. You want feedback. You want things to be happening in your life. That 15-minute chart, man, that thing is crossing all the time. Of course, it crossing all the time is costing you money and putting you at risk. Different story will come to that. So the shorter the time frame, the more time required to manage, of course. If you're in a 15-minute chart, you've got to check that chart four times an hour. Whereas if you're in an hourly chart, you check it once an hour. If you're in a daily chart, you check it once a day. And if you're in a weekly chart, man, Sunday mornings, 10 minutes with sticky buns and coffee, nice and easy. So the shorter the time frame, more time to manage. It also, it does trigger more trades. It gives you a lot more trades. Of course it does. If you're getting, you know, I don't know, uh, 10 trades per, 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 per thousand, hundred, 10 trades per 100 candles. If that's daily, that's 10 trades every four months. But if you move it down to hourly, it's, uh, you know, it's 10 trades every two weeks. So it gives you a lot more trades. We think to ourselves, more trades, that's good news. No. More trades bring a bunch to you. More trades bring up more costs. Every trade has a transaction. That cost is not just the fee that you pay, but there's slippage and there's spread. Spread is, spread is difference between buy and ask. Now, in things like Euro USD, your spread is minute, but it's still money you give away. You cross that spread you lose that money. And then there's slippage. Again, in Euro USD, your slippage is practically, excuse me, nothing because there's so much liquidity. In the DAX, it's practically nothing. In fact, I don't think I've experienced slippage in the DAX yet. In the Aussie, <coughs> the SA40, you get slippage. That slippage means you see a price, the seller's at 118 and you hit it and you actually get 120. And yes, sometimes the slippage works in your favor, but as sure as Murphy's watching it, mostly works against you. So you increase those. So what happens is the frequency goes up, but your profit per trades get smaller, but actually more than just commensurately smaller, it even shrinks a little bit more. You then take smaller profit per trade and your bigger risk is missing stops. Now, guaranteed stops mitigate this. And my advice is if you can do guaranteed stops, the answer is yes. If you can do a guaranteed stop and you're not using a guaranteed stop, then I challenge you to take the insurance off your motor car. I, that's what guaranteed stops are, they're insurance. The beauty of a guaranteed stop is you only pay if you get hit. It's like you insure your car, but you only pay if you have an accident. So guaranteed stop, you only pay for the guarantee component if that stop gets hit. Now, I'll come to in a second more detail, but I only exit on stops. So I'm always paying the guarantee, but that's fine. It means I know that I'm here and no worse. Now the trick with if you're not using guaranteed stops, your exits can get exceedingly messy. And those messy exits cost you, which further reduce it down. So what we then got to say is, well, okay, rather than shortening, how, how, how much can we lengthen these time frames that we're looking at? So I kicked off 2017 by saying, you know what, I'm going to trade hourly charts. I spent a year, I spent 20 months back in 05, 06 trading 15-minute charts. It was so bad I went and got a job because, I mean, it was like having a job. 
Um, and I kicked off this year and I, I said, right, I'm going to get back into actively trading indices and FX. I've been trading Aussie for an age, but I want to get more active in this and I'm going to go to the hourly chart. And it works for me at the moment, notwithstanding that this is broadly my job. If I'm sitting somewhere staring at a chart, I can claim I'm working. There are challenges to it. You know, I, 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 I'm doing other things. I'm having lunches. I'm recording podcasts. I'm in airplanes. I'm driving to venues. And that means I'm still missing the occasional uh, hourly signals. So when at the beginning of the year I thought hourly was perfect, I thought, you know what, I can want, you know, every hour on the hour I can haul out a phone, check the app, see where we are, better yet set the alerts and it'll tell me where we are, etc., etc. And I'm quickly now, a mere eight months into it, realizing that, yes, I can, but this is just, this is, this is naively more work than I had anticipated. And I was naive back in January when I thought that hourly charts was lazy, in part because you know, when I last actively traded the Aussie in a short time frame, I was in a 15 minute. So, hey, 15 to hourly is massive. Some of them we can take out to the four hourly. So, DAX works on four hour. Um, FTSE to a lesser degree. The local market not so good in a four hour. Euro, USD, FX, my viewers don't trade less than a four hour. My thought process, though, is surely we want to get this to daily. Surely we want to be on daily charts. I mean, surely in an ideal world, we want weekly charts. But, I mean, I do some trading. My lazy trading uses weekly charts, and it works. I mean, it put me long the S&P in November, the FTSE in December, the Nikkei in March, and the Indy in, in June. Um, it's working in the weekly space. I'm just not sure I want to gear that necessarily. In the geared environment with CFDs, as the case may be, to my mind, the aim must surely be to get the systems to daily because now what are you doing? You now need to sacrifice maybe if you're only trading, you know, if you're trading SA40, DAX, FTSE, Euro, Dollar, that's four instruments, what do you need? You need about uh, five minutes in the evening to see if anything's happened. The way my system works, I will then confirm and trigger the next day. Five minutes every evening, five days a week, I'm down to my half hour per week of trading time. That's surely the freedom from ties that bind. And that's partly because I'm only trading four things. Instead of trying to trade, you know, 400 South African stocks and 10,000 US stocks and another 10,000 European stocks, um, and I'm trying to, you know, and that in itself is going to suck out 10 hours a day of your time. Forget all of that. Let's get this down to a couple of minutes every day. You know, with your morning coffee, you can haul out the phone, check the position, see what's happening, and then carry on with your day. And the one thing that many of you will be thinking is that you fundamentally lose the thrill of trading when you drop to a daily chart. Yes. If you want to have a thrill, Soweto's got the cooling towers, you can jump off them, thrill. If that isn't thrilling enough for you, blow crunch down in the Eastern Cape, 216 meters, the highest fixed structure bungee jump on planet Earth. Trust me, big thrill. <laughs> Actually, I lie. Damn scary. You don't get your thrills in trading. I mean, life is for thrills. Trading is what enables us to have those thrills. Trading is what gives us free freedom from ties that bind. We don't get the thrills from this. We, 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 we take this seriously. We're committed to it. And we then try and almost counterintuitively, we try and work it out of our life. So that trading takes as small a component as possible. Indices, you can drop to hourly. Below that, you really are starting to just become a day trader. And that's a fair mugs game. As I said, four hourly possible on DAX and FTSE. Um, your daily or weekly do give you larger drawdowns, absolutely. You know, if I'm trading SA40 at the moment, my stops are on an hourly chart, my stops are about 500 points away. If I drop that to a daily chart, my stops run out to about 1,600 points. And a whole bunch of you are like, 1,600 points is the man on drugs. But currently, on my daily system, if you, are in the, if you were trading my 721 in a daily system, you're currently 3,800 points up. Yeah, so your stop is 16, but you're 38 up. Whereas in my hourly, 
my stops are 500 and the good trades are I'm getting kicked out at, at 12, 14, 1500 points profit. So yes, my stops get wider, but my profits get wider too. Now there's an issue if you get a run of losing trades and, and that's what happened to me and we're going to talk about that in, the, in, in, in next month's one. Um, it comes back to me, daily still comes out. FX, hourly is too much noise. For me, FX, four hourly is best. The trick is, so it's 8 a.m., 12, 4 p.m., 8 p.m. Ignore the midnight and the 4 a.m. Midnight, no one's awake. I, I take that back. The Japanese are awake. We love you, Japan. Um, and at 4 a.m., like, I think Japan's on lunch. So really, no one's awake. Um, that kind of works. But still, why not take it down to daily again? And I know it's completely counterintuitive. The whole idea is to, to, to narrow those time frames, to catch those moves. But what do you want to do is you want to catch that trend, that lovely trend that runs. When our market breaks out and our top 40 finally starts to run and it gets to 60,000, my dream is that I'm long at 50,000 and I'm still long at 60,000. That's my dream. My dream is not that between 50 and 60,000 I went in and out and in and out. And I want to get one time and ride it. And, and this is not an insane dream. I took a trade with my lazy system on the Indy 25, which kept me in the position for just over three years. 145% ungeared. That to me is a dream trade. It just from a, for three, the Indy went from 21,000 to 70 odd thousand. And it just ran and ran. And as long as it was running, I was, I was, yeah, I was there. I was having fun and I was not leaving for a moment. Equity, intraday, I mean, you can try and ask, I mean, short answer, you know my theory on equity, just don't bother to trade it. Yes, there are some. The thing with trading equity and intraday is you've got to get your costs down to fractions of a penny. You've got to get your spreads tight. You've got to be quicker than quick. Um, I, was, I mean, watching the day trading Oaks, you know, they're trading Sabania and they, they're trying to make 10 cents in a trade. That's all they're trying to do, 10 cents in a trade. It's exceedingly hard unless you're at a, 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 a day trading firm. And there are some day trading firms around um, in the country, but now you've basically signed up for a job. And they're probably, and they're, no, not probably. There are worse jobs out there, without a shadow of a doubt. But I'm not sure that's what we want. To my mind, equity has to be daily or weekly. And in fact, I did a presentation for the masterclass where we look at a system where we start weekly and then we go down to daily. And it puts you into stock. So it's currently got you long of discovery. It's got you long of Capitec. It's got you long of PSG. And it's got you long of something else. And these are all trades that you've been in for, for in all of those examples. These are trades that you've been in for months and months and months. And in fact, the Capitec trade, I think you've been in from February of last year. And those initially on weekly, and then you trigger down to daily. And again, easy, simple management. And you put your stop loss in, guaranteed stop, you put it in place. You're, you're adjusting your stop loss manually, but it requires you to check every day. No, no, no. I mean, so you're 100% right in the finance cost. So I do. I, tr I had, I mean, so my average trade in an hourly chart is about 13 bars, which is two and a bit days, but I caught that sell-off from 31 May where we went down about 1,800 points. And I was in that trade for just under three weeks. So the funding, I mean, the funding costs are, they are there, they are real. But I mean, the funding costs are a part of the business. And we'll delve into it a lot more in, in, in the September presentation. But I'm not closing my positions at the end of the day. I will carry them through. If the funding costs are, are bankrupting you, then, then, then you need to tweak that system and change it. And one of the methods is to close all positions. But my view is, you know, so when I'm, when I'm <clears throat> short for three weeks, there's funding costs, but I just made 1,800 points. You know, there, there's real profit there to be made, depending at your level. I mean, you're somewhere between, I don't know, what, four rands, your minimum two minis is four rand a point and upwards. You've certainly paid funding costs, but you've equally taken a massive trade. On the euro, I did a trade back in late March, which ran for about three and a half weeks. Again, funding costs. So you get a pile of cash in, and then some of the money leaves for the funding. The, the trick there, is the trick there is more than anything is if it goes sideways on, on you. 
and it swings around about. So your shorts pay you, your longs cost you. I trade the forward, and the thing with that is that there is price bought into it. So if, if the underlying, the top 40, went sideways, that contract would slowly come down. The last time I did the calc, it was about 17 points a day, I think. Um, but uh, the market never goes sideways. The market's always moving around. Your funding cost is, 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 is not what's going to bankrupt you. Yes. So certainly stops in the market will have an impact on price. So let's say I've got a giant position and let's say I've got a million NASPAS shares and my stop loss is here. When the market comes down to my stop loss and I trigger, I'm not selling. So I add further pressure to it. A um, couple of issues in it. Firstly, we must trade things that are, are of size that our position doesn't make a difference. You know, I don't, if I'm trading the Aussie futures or something like that, I might be doing 100 points, 100 rand a point. But in the world of picture, 100 rand a point is, is, is quite small, considering that there are, so 100 rand a point is technically in, in the suffix space, 10 contracts. There are 20, 25,000 contracts a day being traded. I'm a minute fish in that. That only really is going to become an issue if you start trading the very low liquid second tier stocks, your mid caps and that sort of thing. If you're trading stocks that are doing uh, volumes of, 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 of 10 plus million rand per day, no stress there unless you're trading millions of rands. And if you're trading the big indices and the major currencies, we're not even tadpoles. We're so small that, that we're not having an impact. But there's an important point which is allied to your point, and I'm not going to delve into it too much now. Hit just one lap, go see the podcast. Do people hunt stops? Yes. You know that feeling you get where the price was driven down to your stop loss? You got triggered and then it went without you? Yeah. So less so in equity, but absolutely on the indices and the FX. Of course. Of course. It's your job to be smarter than the hunter. Right? You're the bear. Don't put a fucking sign in your face and say, shoot me. <laughs> be the bear. You know, lay a human trap. Ha <laughs> ha, come on, human. Bet you've never seen this before. They are hunting your stop. Yes. Comes back to the point I made earlier. You want to win at this game? I've got to get the money out of your hands. So don't put the stop somewhere obvious. You know, if you play hide and seek and when you hide, you always get caught, you're a bad trader. I use average true range. So hourly chart to trigger and then daily average true range is my stop loss. So at the moment, average true range on the, on the SA40 is about, so I, I, I took a position this afternoon, uh, average true range on the daily chart was 480 points. If you drop that to a, to a daily chart and then you take a weekly average true range, currently 1,600 points. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. And I know the, the trick being. So, so, yeah, because IG continues to trade and you get some little spiky things and you wake up in the morning and the market's exactly where it was when you went to bed, but while you were sleeping, someone took you out. I don't. I just make my stops wide enough and it happens occasionally. But you know what? One day Donald Trump's going to do something really stupid and it's going to save your ass. <laughs> Honest answer. Cool. I'll come back to questions. Let's move on. So the first answer is make your system simple and mechanical. What I mean by simple is just that. If, if, if I ask you to explain your system to you, to me, and 40 seconds in you're still talking, <laughs> uh, you better be paying for the drinks because this is a complicated system and we're going to need some drinks. We believe intuitively, and again I talk about this in the, in the, in the boot camp series, we believe as human beings that complexity equals success. No, it does not. It does not. Simplicity is always the answer. Think of the big things. I mean, what is Uber? It's like deadly simple. What is Airbnb? What is Facebook? These are simple things. Yes, the back ends might be complicated, but the concepts are simple. Complexity doesn't win. Ah, it got us to the moon, but really, I mean, in truth, we got to the moon on a computer that's you know, less powerful than calculators these days. So we need something simple. We need something mechanical. What do I mean by mechanical? Rules-based. Doesn't matter what the rules are, they obviously derive from your simple. It needs to be rules based. Why? Because rules are, rep are repeatable. If you trade on gut, that's very nice, but is gut repeatable? Uh, rules based is repeatable. I, when X happens, I do Y. We can repeat it. We can get the trust in it. We can mechanize it. We can set alerts for it. We can make it a process. 
To my mind, it's about trend-based. If you want to know more about trends, go read Koval, go read Turtles. Do not go and pay for Koval's courses. They're black boxes. They're a scam. But he writes great Michael Koval on trend-based, and Turtles are, is the great experiment that happened back in the 1980s. Trend-based trading means that you get a lot of in-out, in-out, small loss, small loss, small loss, big, and then eventually, boom, off it goes. And those boom, off it goes, pays for everything else plus more. It can become painful. You can have win ratios in the 30%. That's fine. They still work. I use Lazy or 721. My Lazy I'm currently doing on a weekly time frame. My 721 I'm doing on the hourly and the four hourly time frame. I'm not going to delve into those. They're on the website. Um, what I'm very much advocating is one system. Become a master. So I'm currently using two trading systems, and, my, and there is no doubt in my mind that two trading systems is one too many. You want one trading system, and you want to become the expert in that trading system. You want to become the pro. Think of it like cricket, right? Are you the wicketkeeper? Are you the fast bowler, the slow bowler, the batsman? You want to become an expert. Why? Because otherwise you're trying to be jack of, jack of all trades. You're jumping in and out of things. You suddenly see a buy there on the lazy, but there's a sell on the 721, and then there's a this and there's a that, and it just gets... What do you want to be able to do with your system? You want to be able to just trade it without thinking it. You just want to feel it. You just want to be able to look at that chart and say, yep, this is telling me to buy, buy it. The more systems you have, the more complexity, the more confusion, the more you know, what happens if you're long and you get a short? Igor is, Igor is one of the true classic success stories. He came to a presentation, and I'm not taking credit for his success. Igor is a success because of Igor. He came to my presentation I did in about 2001 on warrants. And he looked at this stuff and he said, man, I can make money off this somehow. And it took him a long time and it took him a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. But he is one of those people who's living the life, trading. And that was his tweet of today. One market, one pattern, one system. Pattern or system. Now, the one system I 100% agree with. The one market I'm struggling with, but he's right. You know what I should be? I should be a 721 daily SA40 trader. Poof. I will be the best daily SA40 trader on planet Earth. That's all I need to be. One thing I need to excel at. And the rest of the time, I can be a lazy oak drinking beer. <laughs> Instead, we're trying to be master of everything. And you know the cliche, master of everything. What is it? Jack of all... Uh... Ah, Jack of all trades, master of nothing. <laughs> See, I can't even do cliches well. <laughs> I need to be a master at one thing. How hard is that? One thing. That's all. Surfing, I don't have to be good at. Surfing's just fun. You know, and water up the nose is like painful, but... <sighs> so I'm going to narrow my systems down, and I'm probably going to narrow it to 721, and then I'm going to narrow my markets down. You know why I don't want to narrow my markets down? Oh, because when my SA40 is not making money, I can make money in the DAX, and the DAX isn't making money, I can make... You know, and I mean, now I've got like four different businesses, and they all need time and attention, and they're all going to have leaks occasionally, and... <gasps> Why don't I just become the pro at one thing? You know those kids at school who were brilliant at every sport? And those who got national colors, with the exception of John T. Rhodes, all picked one sport to play. John T. got national colors for cricket and hockey, and he got provincial for rugby as well. But you, you pick one. Back in the day, back in the 80s, you would find an oak who played provincial rugby and provincial cricket and provincial tennis, but th those were the amateur days. Professional sportsman picks a... St Look what happened to the Connor man on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but respect a moment, eh? For $70 million? Man, beat me up. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Be the expert at one thing. For me, I just love... The Aussie, the SA40. Daily chart, 721. That's where I want to get to. And that just frees my time. That now just ticks along in the background. Minute or two every evening. Well, mornings, I prefer the morning watch. I'm down to 10 minutes a week. And it just sort of ticks along and makes the money. Your other trading systems, swing trading, gaps, patterns. Yes. 
to my mind, and this is a debate, and this is a point where if you disagree with me and you think I'm a fool here, that, that's entirely your prerogative. To my mind, trend trading is where it's at. Mechanicalized trend trading. Because when those trends run, man, there is money like you cannot believe. And, and you know, if you've been in the market for less than three years, you don't know what a trend is. <laughs> Not this thing, just true. We've gone sideways. 19, 2006, our top 40 went up 40 plus percent one year. Man, you a trend trader in that thing. Basically, you were long on the 1st of January, you were long on the 31st of December, and you just printed money for the year. And how much work involved? Nothing, when the money just flowed to you, just like rolled in. And all that required was being a pro at one thing. So my idea for many systems is to say, well, when the SA40 is not doing great, I'll make money. But the, you know what, the SA40, there's always money to be made on the SA40. Yes, it booms and busts. But so does the DAC, so does everything else. One product, one system, one master. So that's what I currently trade now. And I look at this chart, and I did this. So I was, I, I was putting this together last week. And I looked at it, and I thought, yo, here's me. You know what I suck at is being lazy. My dream, my dream, <laughs> since I was like 11 years old, my dream is to be lazy. <laughs> and I am perhaps the least lazy good person in the whole wide world. So at the beginning of this year, I decided to be lazy again. I downscaled some contracts from last year. I didn't renew some other contracts. I'm going to be lazy. Look what I'm doing. <laughs> that is not lazy. I'm trading three indices, one currencies, and this excludes my lazy system, <laughs> which then trades other stuff. So when I did this last week and I looked at it, 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 it frankly, it shook me. It was like, whoa, hot man, I'm, you know, I mean, no surprise. I'm failing at being lazy again. I've gotten used to that. <coughs> the point being is, from what I said at the beginning of the year, which I want the freedom from ties that bind, and I used that picture of the balloons in the cloud as my, as my, 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 my uh, uh, affirmation in a sense, uh, wrong word, but what it is, is it enables me to look at that and realize, yes, it fits with my current lifestyle, yes, but I'm kind of excusing it, and no, I actually need to be more aggressive about trying to get to where I want to be, which is a hands-off trader. I need to have less of this, one product, one system, be the best oak in the world at trading it. And although one looks at that and says, oh, that's quite nice, a couple of indices, some stuff, you can see some sense in that, there are times at midday when all four are triggering. And there's lazy me. Like, and, and understand, one of the things, I don't have multiple screens. Right? I have one screen because multiple screens is a myth. That just gives you skin cancer. There's me like, like trying to enter positions and set stop losses. And did I enter, or have I entered the DAX? Or did I, oh, God, and then, no. One system, one process, nice and simple. There is talking about trading with a 1600 point stop loss. That is SA40 on my trading system, daily chart. You got in back at about 40, half thousand, 45 and a half in early July, and you're still long, and we're now almost at 50,000. So sure, the stop is big. But what this means is that back in July, on about the 3rd of July, I entered a trade, and the amount of effort required since then Zero. That is truly lazy. Instead, I'm playing around in the hourly chart. And since then, 25 trades on this one alone. Not being lazy. This is what people, and this is not even a great market to be trading. And just a point on simplicity, that is a 7 and a 21 moving average. Are moving averages magical? No. What does a system do? So we need to get in a market to make money. You have three positions you can be in a market. Long, short, out. They're all valid positions. But you can't always be out. Sometimes you've got to be long or short in order to make some money. Now, we could use a dart and a coin to decide. The coin says long or short, and the dart says, you know, I mean, we could do it completely random. All a moving average does is give you a slight edge. That's it. Nice, simple, clean. I do two-step entries, trigger, confirm. 
If I get a trigger for a buy, I get in the next candle that's green. So always a two-step entry. Trailing stop, the moment I use ATR at the one period longer. So then exiting. We spend time, loads of it, on how we're going to get in. We spend time, loads of it, on what we're going to trade, and the time frames we're going to trade. And then we spend approximately 12 seconds on how we're going to get out. And getting out is really what matters, right? If you get out well, that's where you maximize profit, minimize losses, prevent wipeouts. Exiting is really what matters in this whole process, yet we give it so little time. So, how to exit is absolutely critical. And for me, I am the master on exits because I am brilliant at stop loss. And because you know what, these days you put the stop loss into the system and you just walk away. Market will take you out on your stop. Do not sell at target. There are exceptions. There are some trading systems that are designed for target. There are chart patterns that are target driven. Head and shoulders and all those others that have their targets. But as a trend based trader, exiting at targets makes you poorer. And I can send you the math if you want it. Simon at just one lap.com. Because here's what happens. So your average profit trade is 1,200 points, but you're out at, no, sorry, 600 points. It runs 1,100, reverses, you get 600, nice. And you think, well, why don't I then sell some at 500 and some at 1,000 and lock in more? What are you doing? You're trying to get that kick from the winning trade. You're looking for that, whoa, I've just banked some money. The problem is what happens when the market really runs? And you have offloaded two-thirds of your position. So I've looked at the idea of why don't I trade in lots of three and I bail a third at one ATR, I bail a second third at two ATR, and I let it run. And I ran that with different proposals. I mean, it's the beauty of Excel. You basically say, you know, and I said to Excel, this is the market. How about if I do different metho methodologies of scaling out of, of positions? And every single way I scaled out of positions made less money then just get in and get stopped. Because a trending market will go places you have never imagined. Capitec hit 900 Rand today. Anyone think that's not crazy? Of course it's crazy. As a shareholder, it's a lovely sort of crazy. But if you'd gone long back at any level, I mean, we, we lack ambition in a sense. Markets do crazy things. When we break and our market goes to new highs, what are you all going to be talking about? You're going to be talking about recessions and about presidents and all the reasons why the market can't be going higher. And in the meantime, the market will be going higher. And if you're in a position, you're going to take profits quickly because you're, you know what, some politician or some banker or targets are messy, reduce profits. The math proves that there are exceptions if the systems are. But if you are a trend-based trader, run with the trend out on the stop. Run with the trend, out with the stop. So this is loads of theory. Nice ideas, you've got to test it. I've talked about this before, the Mark Douglas methodology of how to learn how to trust the system. It's critically important that you trust the system. And there are a couple of things you do. You, back, you do some manual back tests. You do some demo trading. Then you start trading small. If you want to trade the SA40, you don't jump in and trade 50 bucks a point. You jump in and trade 4 bucks a point because then there's no emotional impact to the money. You slowly scale it up to get the confidence. I'm trading FX. I'm trading mini lots. Because last time I traded FX, I only just came away with my fingers. Slow process to learn to trust the system, to become an absolute pro of the system. Part of what this does to you is it makes you the pro. It makes you see it. It makes you just understand it and always know what it is. If you've spent time in front of charts, you know that when you have a trading system and it's all there, and sometimes you look at it and it's like, is that a buy? Or worse, you think the one moving average is above the other and you enter and then you go back and <gasps> they were that way around. <laughs> hey, no, been there, done that, lost the money. Man, if there's a rookie error to make, I've made it three times. You run through and you test and you test and you test and you build the confidence. And it's an important point of this process to become that, 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 that complete trader is that this doesn't happen tomorrow. It doesn't happen this year. It might not even, I mean, I'm eight call it nine months into the journey, and it was last week when I realized that actually my simple trading was 
like <laughs> anything but simple. Three indices and, a, and, and an FX, hourly charts. Man, nine months before I smelt that coffee. Perfect trades, I'm not going to touch on that because it's there and I've hit my time. Involve your family, whoever that might be, your colleagues. Tell them what you're doing, why you're doing, how you're doing it. If you don't have a family, no sweat. But there's going to be processes, there's going to be commitments, get them involved and explain. You know, they don't have to teach them what, I mean, you know, I once tried to tr explain my trading system to my wife and that still remains the single most complicated conversations ever. <laughs> but, it, you know, in, engage your family. When you go home this evening, say, hey, I, today I was at a thing, I'm going to become a... Because initially when you first propose this to your spouse, if you have one, they're going to want to lock you in the cupboard. They're going to think this is the terriblest idea you've ever, ever had. Um, back to the first point. Make it work for you. The market must come to you. Keep it simple. Decide what you want to trade. Decide your time frames, your systems. Understand this is process. It's going to take loads of time to get there. It's going to be a slow, slow process. Keep those risks low while you're learning. You know, it's like, you know, if you want to be a Formula One driver, they start you in a go-kart. And there's a reason. Because they start you in a Formula One car, you're dead. Be prepared for large amounts of sweat and tears and pain and frustration and realizing you've gone down the wrong road. But I understand that the rewards are very, very real. We get this right. We have freedom from ties that bind. What, what can be more important to us? The freedom to do what we want. And maybe that, you know, climbing Everest is not because of, you know, I don't know, gammy legs or old age or fear of heights or whatever. But, but a lot more freedom than the traditional rat race individual has out there. And we live in the future. We can do it. We absolutely can. So run the processes, the what's, the why's, the how's, the when's. Think about it. Write about it. Start making plans. Test them. Back up, test other ones. Decide that you want to trade the SA40, then realize that it's a horrible thing and you'd rather trade the S&P. And who needs friends? You'll trade to midnight and that sort of thing. And then realize you do need friends. And anyway, the bars aren't open at 3 o'clock in the morning. Back out of that, find a new one. How do we learn? By doing. Importantly, why we learn by doing? Because we make the mistakes. Nothing like a slap on the nose from the market to understand that, okay, that didn't work. But inversely, don't panic. When, when, when a, week in, a random week in August comes along and the market just like claps you four times in one week. Yeah, okay, no fun involved whatsoever. Go buy some stuff on Amazon, come back on Monday, do it all again. Don't every time you, you lose, start tweaking and changing. Sit down and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to commit to it. I'm going to run with it. I'm going to spend a year trading this system. I'm going to take this time frame and I'm going to trade it for a year. And at the end of the year, you're like, okay, so that did or didn't work. What were the pros? What were the cons? What can I adjust? Do I change my product? Do I change this? Do I, you know, don't like every Monday make changes. Because at the end of the process, it, as we're moving forward, we need to be convinced by what works. And that conviction comes from proof, and that proof comes from consistency. Legal stuff, make money, yours, lose money, somebody else's. This is the process. I hope I gave you a ton to think about tonight. Uh, you got questions, thoughts, theories, drop me mails, send me tweets, send me whatever, my contact details. Uh, you're welcome to get a hold of me any ways you want. Let's engage this. We're back in a month. We've got more to it. If there's stuff that comes between now and then, I'm going to pull the questions, the thoughts, and the comments. I'm going to pull that into this. And what we're trying to do is, in truth, at the same time, exceedingly simple. We want to make the markets slave to us, our own little ATMs, um, and at the same time, exceedingly difficult. That difficultness, however, is not the market or the platform or the product. The difficulty is us. And the best way to get around difficulty is simplicity. One product, one system, be the best trader of that in the entire place. And then we've got freedom from ties that bind. And what more do we want as humans? Ladies and gents, appreciate your time very much. Thank you.